You can turn any picture into an interactive visual, which can be super helpful. For example, when you run a department store and you want to summarize your data onto a floor map. And that floor map should be interactive with other visuals on your report page. Or maybe you sell car components and you want to have an image of a car. And by selecting a certain car component, you see all of the data for that selected component. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up without using custom visuals. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how you can turn any image into an interactive visual. And the example that we're going to recreate is this one over here. We have a floor map for a department store, and here we are visualizing every department in a different color. We have menswear, womenswear, and kidswear. And right next to it, I created a line chart that shows the sales over time. And just by selecting here one of the departments, for example, menswear, you see it filters the other visual. Now let's get started. Now as a starting point, I only have that line chart. And right next to it, we are going to insert, first of all, an image, an image of the floor map. So I'm going to go here to the top to insert, and then we're going to go here to image. Now let's take the image and put it right next to the line chart. Then resize it so that it has more or less the same height. And then we go here to the right hand side to format, style, and there we have the scaling set to normal. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is create a shape map. A shape map that visualizes the different departments as rectangles. The shape map is still a preview option, so we have to go first to file and then to options and settings, and then options. And then here under preview features, there just make sure that the shape map visual is selected and click on OK. Now after enabling it, you will find it under visualization. So let's insert one. Now, a shape map is not meant for showing precise geographical locations. However, it is meant for comparing regions with each other by filling them up with different colors. Now, if you go to formatting options and then map settings, then here we can choose the map type. And there are already a few that you can choose from. And the most interesting one is all the way at the bottom because there we have the option to choose a custom map. And this custom map needs to be in the format of a topo JSON file which lets you store geographical data. However, we are going to use it to store where the regions are on an image. Now, let me show you how it's done. Now, we need a tool to create these type of files, and that lets us draw the regions that we need in the right places on the image. Now, although there are many tools that let you do this, the one that we are going to use is free and open source, which is QGIS, Geographical Information Systems. Okay, now, where can you download it? Just go to their website, which is qgis.org. And there, on the first page, you will find a download option. All right, now just download it. And after downloading it and installing it, you can open it up and it looks like this over here. Now, the first thing that we need is our image because on top of image, we want to create our shapes. All right, now to insert our image, we can just go here to layer and then we can go here to add layer and we want to have what is called a raster layer. Now from here, we can just browse to our image, to our picture, just select it, press on open, and click on add. Now here we have our first layer with our image. Now all of the layers you will see here in the bottom left corner, and we can deselect it to hide it, reselect it to show it. All right, now we want to create a second one. And on the second layer, we're going to create the shapes that we want to display on the image. So let's go here to layer again. And now we go for create layer and we want to have a shape file layer. Now let's give it a name. So this is going to be my floor map. Then file encoding we leave as it is. The geometry type we set to polygon. This we can leave as it is. And here we can add more fields. Now here the field that's always there is the ID field. However, in this case, we could add another field for the department. Now, the department data type is going to be text, so string, so that's good. And then we can click here on add to fields list. And just like this, we can add more fields to all of the shapes that we're going to create, which are polygons. Okay, now let's click on okay. And then here from the top, we can go into editing mode. So toggle editing on, and then here we can choose to create the first polygon. 
So let's click on this icon and now we can start drawing. So I go here to the top left corner and it's probably a good idea to zoom in a little bit. So zoom in, zoom in, zoom in so that you can be a little bit more precise. So in this top left corner, I'm going to have my first point. Then I go to the other corner. So I want to go here to the top right, click again, and then I make the four corners that I want to have. Okay, so, and after you created all four of them, then the first polygon is done. And then you right click, and you see now we can type in the ID number. So this is the first department. The department name is going to be menswear, just like this. And then just click here on OK. And you see, that is the first polygon. And now I continue with the next one. So I'm going to go down a little bit and let's go for the women's wear. So over here, I do exactly the same. So I click in all of the corners. One, two, and then three, four. OK. And then right click. This is ID number two and department is then women's wear. Now, if you want to make adjustments, then you can always go here to the selection tool and then here, make your selection and then maybe zoom in a little bit, holding the control key and scroll Now you can zoom in. And then let's say I want to adjust that point. Then you select here the editing tools. Let me put this here to the left and then you can click on it once, click on it twice and start moving it to wherever you like. Or alternatively, you can also right click on that point. Then you see here all of the X, Y coordinates and you can adjust it from here. All right, now let me quickly finish this. Now here I'm done with creating the shapes and you see we have three rectangles, one rectangle for each department. And if you want, you can also play around with the formatting options. So over here you can choose different colors. Now, after we have done this, well, the hardest part is already done because now we can export it as a GeoJSON file. So to do that, we can go here to the layer section, right click and then export and then here save feature as. And here the first thing that we need to choose is the format. Now the Power BI shape map needs TopoJSON, but TopoJSON is not one of the options. So we can go for GeoJSON and then transform that into TopoJSON, which stores all geographical information a little bit more efficiently. Okay, so let's go here for GeoJSON and then later on transform it. Then the file name, this is going to be the floor map example. And then here, these three dots, click on it and choose the location where you want to store it. Now give it a name, so floor map. Now choose your location. Then we can click here on save and everything else we leave as it is. Then just click here on OK. And now we successfully save this vector layer to whatever file path you chose. And now we have to transform it to a topo JSON. So let's do this. Let's first open the browser and then go to a website that's called mapshaper.org. Now here we have to choose the file, the GeoJSON file that we just created. And here we have the three rectangles that we drew in that other program. Now, what's the next thing? Well, now we can click here in the top right corner on export and here we can convert it to a topo JSON. Then click on export and then you can open it up in any text editor. So if you would just open it, then it would open a notepad and would look like this over here. But maybe you have a nicer text editor. I, for example, use Atom and then we can also in an easier way format it a little bit nicer. Okay, so let me do that. I'm going to open my tool. So here I have the same file, but open up in a different text editor. Why would you want to do that? Well, here we have some color coding and there are easier ways to take what we have here and then put it in a nicer format just with a click of a button and it looks like this, okay? And here we have the coordinates for the arcs. If you were very precise in a previous program, then you don't have to make changes here, but maybe double check. Now in our case, we have three rectangles and that means that that number that I have here, the 138 should be over here as well, minus 138. Now, if you see something like this, minus 139, then you probably want to change that to 138. So that's the same. Okay. Now, for me, that looks pretty good. I was precise enough before. And then the next thing that you want to change is here the scale. Because if we leave the scale like it is, then you will still not see anything once we use this for a shape map. We need a much smaller scale. So here we can take these numbers, just copy it, and then open Excel. And here just 
paste it inside of a cell, and then copy both of these values in a separate cell. So one goes over here, and then I take the other one, put that in the cell right next to it, all right? And then we just divide one by the other. So this one divided by that one. That gives me the ratio between these two numbers, and that is important. Now here for the first value, I'm gonna fill it. Something very small, so zero, 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 one. Okay, just a small number. And then right next to it, we need also a very small number. However, the ratio needs to be the same as what it originally was. So if we choose for the first one, 0 0.00001, then for the second one, we need to take that number, divide it by the ratio number, okay? And that is then the value that I can copy over. Now let's first adjust the formatting. So over here is a number, and let's, let's add some decimals, just like this, okay? And then let's copy that number over to our text file. And then we place that second number there. Okay, and then for the first number, we can take over here the 0001. Let's copy that as well. And put that here on the left-hand side of the scale. Good. Now, after adjusting the scale, the third thing that we need to do is to go here to translate and then put the coordinates to 0, 0. All right, which centers it. Now, after that is done, we can save our topo JSON file and use that for our shape map visual in Power BI. So let's save it. Now here we are back in Power BI and we're going to select the shape map again, go to formatting options, visual map settings. Now, here we already selected the custom map and here now we can select our own custom map that we just created with the three rectangles. All right, so click on browse, then select the topo JSON file, not the GeoJSON, all right? And there you go, we have our three regions showing up in our shape map visual. Now let's make some changes. First of all, let's switch to the data section where we can put on location the departments, right? Because we have one rectangle for each department. So the location is basically the department. So department on location. Now you see we have sum of sales amount still on color saturation. Now let's maybe remove that for now. And you see we have two blue rectangles and one gray one. Why is one gray? Now here you see when I hover over it, I made a typo for one of the fields. It says women wear, not women's wear, okay? Now, if you see something like this, that means, means you have to go back to your topo JSON file. Let me go back. And then here we have all of the different properties and just adjust women wear to women's wear. Okay, and that's it. So that it's the same as in your data set so that there's a match. Okay, and if I then save it and then go back to formatting for that map visual, then we just have to re-import that map. So again, custom map, browse, and then you select the file again. And that fixes the issue. Now, the next thing that we can do is choose different colors for each department. So that is formatting, so fill colors, colors, and then here show all, and then here we can choose what we want to see. So kids wear can be blue, and then men's wear can be orange, and then women's wear can be yellow. All right, so you see now we have different colors. Now, let's take the shape map and then drag it over here onto the image. Now, first of all, we want to get rid of the title. So let's go here to general, title, turn it off. And then we also want to get rid of the background color. So let's go here to effects and then turn the background off. And now we just have to position it exactly over the image. And you see, it's already pretty good. If you want to be a little bit more exact, just go here to properties, position, and then play around here with the coordinates and how big it is. So here in the size, however, this already looks pretty good. Now, let me just make a few adjustments. Perfect, okay. And now let's see if it works. Now, if I click here on one of the rectangles, for example, for manswear, you see it's filtering the other visuals in my report on the selected department. And the same if I click on the other ones, perfect. So that is working. Now, of course, it would be nice if the colors would match uh, so that we have the same color for each department here as here, and that we still see a little bit of the background image. Okay, so we have to add a little bit of transparency. However, if we look here in the formatting options, fill colors, there's no transparency option. Hmm. However, we can create a measure that applies the color and transparency using conditional formatting. But for that, we need to write a measure. So let's do this, let's add a new measure. And we can call this one color department 
condition formatting. Now, first of all, we need to know which department we are looking at. So we can create a variable and then let's call this one department. And we can use the selected value function, which returns a value only when there's one value. Okay, so here that would mean we can look at the department ID column and only when there's one department ID, it returns, well, the department ID. All right, so then a second variable. Now, this one is going to be for the transparency that we want to apply. So let's say we want to have a transparency of 0.3 and then we can return the color. So here, probably easiest to go for a switch function. All right, and then here we can say department, department, and then we have if department one, then we want to have a certain color. And then we can continue like this with the second department. So over here, department two, then we want to have green, department three, then we want to have orange. Okay, now then we can close the switch function and return the color. Now, instead of blue, green, and orange, we're going to use RGB A codes. Now, I just have to copy them over. So let me copy over the first one and paste it over here. Now you see we have the RGB code for the color, but we then also have the transparency that we choose to apply here uh, and that we stored in the variable transparency. Okay, and to combine it, we just use the ampersands. All right, now we can do the same thing for the other one. So let me copy that over. And here we just have the matching colors that I also used in the rest of the report and we have the transparency. Okay, now once this is done, then we return the color and that we're going to use for conditional formatting. So let's go back to the formatting options for the shape map, then fill color, colors, and then here we're going to choose conditional format. And the formatting style that we are going to use is field value. And then here we can choose the color, department, conditional formatting. All right, let's click on OK. And that looks much better. So you see, we have transparency applied so that we can still see the background image. And we can now click over here on Mansware. You see, it also nicely matches with the other visualization. So this looks perfect. Okay, so here we have our interactive shape map based on our floor map image. Perfect. Now, if you like, we can still make further adjustments. For example, the borderline around the shapes. Maybe we don't want it. So let's go back here to fill colors, border. And you can also set the border width to zero. Maybe it looks just a little bit cleaner. All right. And maybe you don't want to have different colors for each department, but you want to have a gradient applied based on the sales for each department. It's also possible. We just need to play around then with the measure and that we wrote for a conditional formatting. So over here, I applied a gradient color, not the prettiest. However, uh, the idea is that you would write a measure like this one. Now a measure that applies the gradient could look like this, where you first figure out the department, then the maximum total sales for all of the departments, same for the minimum, and then you apply a transparency based on the scaling that you come up with, right? So you could look at the total sales amount for a certain department, see how far it is from the minimum, apply a certain adjustment factor and divide that by the range. And also here, you can adjust that range a bit. Okay, and then the end is the same basically as before. Okay, now, once you have that, also you can use it on conditional formatting to apply a certain color with a gradient based on whatever value field you come up with. Now, if you wanna dive a bit deeper into that DAX calculation that I just showed, just check out this video over here. Now that's it, this is how you can take any picture and turn it into an interactive visual using the native shape map visual in Power BI. Now, of course, there are many more use cases for this and you can create awesome designs now, if you want to see more design videos, then check out these videos over here. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.